Hi, Grace. Welcome to Venice. A little bit early, but I just wanted you to see where I'm sitting. Unfortunately, the music just ended. They usually start up again every few minutes, so hopefully it will start again soon. I hope you're doing well. Just write to your message. Mark, hi Mark. Welcome to Venice. We'll start in a few minutes. I'm sitting in Piazza San Marco. You can see the Basilica. Just beyond Cafe Florian. Hi, Angela, welcome to Venice. Just sitting here at Cafe Florian. We'll start in a few minutes. It's a beautiful day, as you can see. sunny and very warm in the 30s. The bells are ringing and mass is starting. Nice here. Hi. Can you see this beautiful square? Hi, Nico. Isn't it gorgeous? I'm sitting here at Cafe Florian and it's a perfect day. The music was should start in another few minutes. Here I am. You can see the square. Look how quiet it is. Is it incredible for August? It's unheard of to see such an empty square. Unbelievable. No one in sight. Very, pre very pretty, but also at the same time a little sad. Let's see how many we have for so far. Hi, Tan. How are you, darling? I hope you're doing okay in Melbourne. I'm sitting at Cafe Flurry and having an aperitivo. So we have um, the 21 Schengen countries that can actually travel. So uh, Germany, Belgium, um, there's also a lot of people from the UK, uh, but mostly, mostly Germany, Sweden, uh, Denmark, you know, the Northern European areas, France, not so many because uh, Macron um, released a, a bonus for uh, French residents who vacate within France. So most of the, the French are, have remained in their own um, cities. There's also locals. A lot of Italians have not been traveling, are not traveling abroad. So there are also locals. It's a little bit warm for Italians. You know, most of them are at the beach. Hi, Rosalind. Ciao. How you doing, guys? Ciao, Belli. Welcome. 
you know, usually I do these aperitivo uh, webinars in the afternoon and many Aussies have asked me to do, um, you know, to do one in the morning. So here I am in Venice. I happen to be here uh, for work reasons. So for those who don't know me, I am from Perth, um, living in Florence for over 20 years. So I'm actually a tour operator, guide and also sommelier. So most of what I do is evolves around food and wine. And at the moment, because it's a, such a particular year, um, many of our travelers have postponed to the following uh, year. So I'm working for a friend of mine, Ilaria Duva, and she's an amazing woman who uh, runs um, the island of uh, the, the Chini Foundation, which is situated on, on the island of San Giorgio. We're going to head over there um, a little bit um, later on. And, oh my gosh, the music started. Hang on. Let me just turn around so you can see that. Welcome, everyone. How beautiful. So as I explained, guys, I'm working on the island of San Giorgio, developing the uh, travel part of, uh, of Ilaria's business. And, and so I'm here every week. So what a great opportunity to show you Venice. I'm sitting at Cafe Florian. Yeah, lucky me, I know. And Cafe Florian is actually the oldest cafe in Europe. Have a look at how beautiful it is. So this is obviously the outdoor area in Piazza San Marco, which is the only grand square in Venice. And here you can see the cafe. So the cafe was founded in 1725 by Floriano Francesconi. And so of course, you can imagine what the cafe has witnessed uh, over the hundreds of years. Uh, if you can imagine uh, Marie Antoinette style um, women, beautifully dressed, sitting at the cafe, having enjoying coffee, hot chocolate, and tea. This was actually um, one of the, the only meeting places at the time that, was admi that actually admitted women. And that's why it was uh, a place that was frequented, of course, by Casanova. So the cafes witnessed the splendor, of course, of the serenissima la serenissima which means the serene venice the serene republic have a look what i'm having okay so here it is 11 uh, a.m not a time to be drinking anything alcoholic but of course in italy typically uh, at 11 o'clock before lunch one has a pre aperitivo See, someone wrote something lucky here. Yeah. And so I'm having a, a house uh, non alcoholic cocktail, which is um, grapefruit juice, uh, bitter, and orange juice. Look at how beautiful um, the setting is of this cafe. It's one of the most beautiful. And here you can see in front of me. San St. Mark's Square. So the patron saint of Venice is San Marco. And the square, um, unlike many other historical cities uh, in Italy, there are many squares because squares are typically meeting points. Whereas in Venice, this is the only main square. Look how beautifully dressed the waiters are. 
So I'm sitting here enjoying the view with you all. Now we're going to take a little walk towards the facade of San Marco. We're going to make our way passing the Doge's Palace along the um, Riva degli Schiavon. So you'll see a little bit of the lagoon of Venice. Hang on. Uh, along with, and then we'll jump on a, a vaporetto and head over to the island of San Giorgio. When we arrive at San Giorgio, we will try the Esprit di San Giorgio, which is a, a spritz uh, at San Giorgio, uh, the island of uh, San Giorgio. It's their signature cocktail. So I'm going to pay and then we're going to keep on walking, guys, okay? I hope you're all well. It's winter over there. There may be some Americans also early morning, early risers. There are some early riser Americans on, um, on the webinar. So welcome, guys. I'm just going to pay for, the, for my drink and we're going to walk along. So it's a, a magic um, day beautiful and warm and I've been traveling to Venice also Rome um, the city that I found we're all well cloudy which day yes yes yeah, very warm here so um, Roy I found actually Rome to be the quieter city um, I think a lot of people are just nervous to travel to the larger cities so the smaller cities are a little more frequented, like also Florence. Scusa, posso pagare? Grazie. I'm just going to pay for my eight euro fifty water. And grazie mille. Grazie. And of course, you pay for this absolutely stunning view. It's one of the most beautiful cafes. I'm going to let you look at the music for a little bit. Grazie mille. Perfetto, grazie. Okay, belly. I'm ready. Let me just put my mask on so I can show you inside the cafe because it is absolutely beautiful. And then we'll move on. <laughs> so we have to wear masks indoors. Also on the Vaporetto. Okay. <sighs> Okay, guys, let's walk a little bit. So I'm going to walk you inside so you can have a look at the beautiful, elegant tea rooms. Mm, right the beautiful tea rooms. Salve. Let's have a little walk around. You can see the bar. Elegant and beautiful. Arrivederci, grazie. Okay, guys, let's start walking. So let's take the central part of um, the square so that you can get a great view it's kind of unheard of to see the square so empty and here we can see the cathedral of saint mark's with its golden mosaics this is the basilica of san marco from the 11th century so you imagine this city it's not a natural island. It actually has been man-made, okay? So it was 
the foundation was put down in 400, 421 AD on swampy marshlands. And the city was built using wooden piles. So um, basically these piles were um, driven deep into the ground and um, clay was layered on top. And this became um, one of the most important maritime uh, republics. So if you think about uh, um, the peninsula, we're situated now in Venice. We are on the northeastern side of the city. So the main ports, the main maritime ports were Genova. So we head over to the opposite side, west. Piso, Amalfi. So the only one ports to be, well, the only one that exists as the main, and main port today is Genova, because Amalfi is now Naples. And then we also have Puglia, which is south, uh, southeast, and also Venezia. So this uh, city was uh, one of the most important, one of the wealthiest, and it's kind of incredible uh, when you think about the fact that it still exists today with these beautiful buildings. The which means casa, house, a large ca, casa. And basically what they uh, would do is they would um, create these buildings using very lightweight. Yeah. Aspetta, uh, guys, I lost you. I lost you guys. You there? One second. There's something wrong with my Wi Fi. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Okay. Okay. Back? Yes, we're back. Bene. So that's what was so genius because, uh, yeah, perfect. It had a little, a little hiccup. Of course, when you check everything, it's perfect. And then, so here in front of us, we can see the Doge's Palace. Okay, so the Doge's were, um, when we were separate city states, we basically had um, different um, governmental systems. So until the independence of, uh, of Italy, um, this uh, city was a, a separate country almost, and the Doge's were the rulers of Venice. And here, these beautiful columns that you can see, we're heading towards the lagoon. On the left side, you can see the symbol of Venice, which is the lion, the lion of St. Mark. Look at that beautiful view. And... If you can see over in the distance, the bell tower, that's the island of San Marco, of, of San Giorgio. That's basically where we're heading towards. On the right side, the column is of the former patron saint, San Todaro. Then centuries later, Saint Mark became the patron saint. And here we're making our way along <laughs> the Riva degli Schiavon. So a typical August would mean you wouldn't see, good morning, darling, you wouldn't see any of this. There would be just, it would just be covered with thousands and thousands of people. The bell tower of St. Mark that actually has a lift. You can actually arrive at the top and see an incredible view of the island. And we're going to take the stairs passing the Doge's Palace and the Bridge of Size. The Bridge of Size, which is a very famous bridge 
Good morning, darlings. Very famous bridge, one of the most famous in, in Venice. So let's walk across here. Let's have a look at, see the gondolieri. Over on this side is the island of Giudecca and the island in front of us is the island of San Giorgio. Ecco, the gondolieri are not working. So the gondolas are all handmade. There's actually an area, a workshop place where you can go and see them being made. These were the original boats that were used even for the dojos before they um, created the Riva boats. The Riva is the boat that you can see in front of me. Let me just see if I can zoom in so you can see it. The Riva is like a Ferrari on water. The, the motor is actually by Lamborghini. So it's more of a Lamborghini on water. Um, and it's all handmade um, in a wooden um, lightweight boat. That is typically the private boats used for taxi services in, uh, in Venice. The, the river boat you typically see only on the lakes uh, in Italy, Lake Garda. Como and also in Venezia. They're very beautiful design. Riva, R I V A, is the design of the boat. The imagery of all the very famous stars that arrive for the film festivals and the biennales, usually you see them on those boats. And now we're going to cross over here so you can see the bridge of size. And here it is, Eccola. So the bridge was built in the 17th century. On the left side um, was the original, um, the old prison. So they basically built the new prison on the other side of the river. That's where they built the bridge. So the theory is that whoever traversed the bridge would sigh as they would look out and see their last sight of freedom. That's why it's called the Bridge of Size. In Italian, it's Ponte dei Sospiri, the Bridge of Size. So let's keep walking across here. The Riva degli Schiavon. We're going to take the Vaporetto to San, from San Zaccaraia over to San Giorgio. Eccoci. Let's get a good view. Not of the made in India magnets. Ecco. Che bello. It's really incredible in the morning when you pass by, you see all of the, um, the rubbish being collected and, and boated out. Um, everything basically has to uh, come in on water. So you can look out and see this incredible view of the lagoon. You might be able to see some other islands around. Very far in the, in the furthest distance is actually Lido. There are actually 32 islands in the lagoon. And they are absolutely beautiful. Um, few of them are not, um, are not lived on, so there are no inhabitants. Uh, but they're incredible to visit. Probably the ones that you've visited, if you've been to Venice before, would be Burano, Murano, and Torcello. But there are many others that are really wonderful. There's one that I love called Sant Erasmus. It's a, a famous island, famous for artichoke. So it's a really, really beautiful island. There's also the island of Santa Cristina, which has a luxury villa of Swarovski on the island. That's also very beautiful. 
can hear you can get a great view of where we're heading to. We're taking the Vaporetto over to San Giorgio. So let's... Okay, so we've got the Vaporetto at 11.25. The gondolieri are not working. Oh, guys. Allora. So we head over here. And we can take, it's basically the first stop. Our first stop will take us directly over the other side of the lagoon. Eccoci. Look at that view. So beautiful. Most of the larger churches that you see, Madonna della Salute, Rendentore, Basilica di San Giorgio Maggiore, all designed by Andrea Palladio. He was a genius architect of the Renaissance. In fact, if you visit uh, the Veneto, the region, um, there it is. If you visit the region, you can actually visit a series of uh, Palladian uh, palaces that are very, very beautiful. Okay, guys, we're about to get on the Vaporetto. They're not working because this to No, they're not working because there's no tourists. I have my Venetian Republic mask on and we're going to head over to the other side. So typically, um, you never see uh, the gondolieri um, not working in August. Um, the dominant uh, clientele that is not around are Americans, Chinese, um, Australian, yeah, universal, Brazilian. Uh, so these are the, the, you know, only Europeans traveling means there's a lot less work. Many of these, I mean, all of these cities are basically designed um, for uh, an industry of millions of tourists per year. So typically in Venice, uh, they will have um, 30, 40 million tourists per year. Uh, the cruise ships alone um, that cross over the lagoon that we're crossing now, um, they'll typically be five a day from May till October and there are no cruise ships at the moment. The cruise ships uh, arrive at a dock where they can basically walk into the city. So you have, um, you know, 5,000 uh, to 25,000 people per day frequenting the historical center of Venice. You have none of that traffic right now. So that's the difference. As I said, it's very beautiful, but on an economic standpoint, Point, it's devastating. It'll devastate a lot of businesses um, because we're actually going into towards the winter. So this is our, our season to, to work basically. Now we're going on the Vaporetto. Ecco, then lì, let's get on the vaporetto. Grazie. We're going to cross over. Okay, you can get a beautiful view now of the lagoon. So on the island of San Giorgio, there is a yacht club. Okay, you can see the club, the yacht club over there. 
Here you can see one of those exclusive river boats crossing over the lagoon. Look how beautiful. And here, if you look at the church on Judeca Island, let me see if I can show you that church. That is the Redentore. Um, so we had the feast day uh, one month ago. On the feast day of the Redentore, there is a, a pontoon bridge that is assembled to arrive on the mainland of Venice. So you can actually walk over the other side of the lagoon. It's something really incredible where there are fireworks and celebrations. Unfortunately, this year we didn't have uh, fireworks, but the bridge was uh, assembled. The bridge has been assembled since the Middle Ages for pilgrims. So it's something really, really wonderful to see. Here you can see Madonna della Salute. And we just left San Zaccaria. We're heading over to San Giorgio. Look how close it is. Just one stop over to arrive at the island of San Giorgio, the magic island of San Giorgio. So the island, uh, you can see on the on the right side facing us, on the opposite side of the facade is the Benedictine Monastery. And there is the Basilica of San Giorgio Maggiore. As I explained, built by the architect Andrea Palladio. Inside the Basilica, there are frescoes by Tintoretto, who was like the Michelangelo of, uh, of Venezia. It's quite a, a, an incredibly beautiful church because you can head inside and also climb that campanile, that bell tower. There's also a lift for that bell tower. Now on the right side where you can see the monastery, um, this is a, a Benedictine monastery. And in fact, it's a, a, a private island. The only um, residents of the island are actually the monks. The island um, is run by a foundation, which is called the Chini Foundation. And um, with a guided, um, with an audio guide to a leader, you can actually visit the foundation. And um, it's, it's something really incredible. Inside you can see uh, the monastery, uh, the Palladian uh, cloister, Boira clo cloisters, and also a refectory by Palladio. Now I'm gonna show you, we can maybe see a little bit of the, the loggia. And we've arrived, two minutes. It took us three minutes to get here. Incredible. Hiya. Grazie, arrivederci. Arrivederci. Oh, amori, sto facendo una, un, un webinar. So here, if you look on this right side, you can see, I just saw some friends of mine, they're doing the, taking the tour here, this beautiful monastery. Oh, wow. Now, if you look inside, You can see, not very well, but the Palladian Lodge. So it's something really beautiful to, to visit. And in fact, um, this um, wonderful space, which is um, run by the foundation, um, at the moment, uh, due to COVID, um, it's only visited Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So it's an audio guide with a tour leader uh, organized by uh, Duva, 
So Ilaria Duva um, has, um, it's been a year now that she has been running the uh, Chini Foundation, which is wonderful uh, because um, included in the walk is also a visit to the Vatican chapels. So uh, the Vatican chapels are um, chapels that are situated inside uh, the forest area, the woodlands, a private park area of the foundation. So it's behind this building and the monastery. So the, the chapels have been individually designed by famous uh, architects from all over the world that include Norman Foster and even an Aussie called Sean Godsell. Uh, a soundtrack has also been created um, called The Vatican Chapels, and it's available on Apple Music and Google Play. It was created by uh, a musician and composer, Antonio Freza, and he created the compositions for each chapel. It's so magic because you can actually see uh, the lagoon. So it's, it's really something special. And the idea of creating the Vatican Chapel soundtrack was born, of course, by the vision of the one and only Ilaria Duva. And uh, it's something uh, wonderful. If you guys have um, Apple Play, Apple Music or Google Play, you can download uh, the, the soundtrack, Vatican Chapel's soundtrack. It's very, very beautiful. We'll listen to a little bit of it now when we go inside the um, San Giorgio Cafe. And here we can see this beautiful place that is just one stop away from um, the main area of, uh, of Venice. So you can imagine when it's really, really busy in Venice, it's such a wonderful experience to actually just take the Vaporetto and get away from the crowds and come over to um, the island of San Giorgio. We're now heading towards the cafe. We'll meet the staff, Anna Maria and Sasha. The chef's name is Adriano. You can imagine what this place is like at uh, sunset, aperitivo time, a little later in the afternoon. What about you guys? Are you having an aperitivo or what? What are you drinking? Spritz? Beer? Well, some of you, it's very early, so probably having a coffee. Echo. We've nearly arrived. Red wine. Okay, that's good. Gin, mint, and julep. Bono. Actually, the Esprit of uh, San Giorgio has gin. We love gin. San Giorgio Fay. And the girls have, of course, put on the Vatican Chapel's music. Sono i miei amici. Here I am at Cafe Scorch. I'm going to get the girls to make up for us. The chicket. So, the keyboard of Venice is chicket. It's like in where we see wine that makes bottles. It's real. It's real. So, uh, in, uh, in um, in the bars, article said, and where little spritz prosecco on tap. Remember that prosecco 
is from the Veneto region, okay, produced with the uh, Clara uh, varietal, carbonized uh, sparkling wine, coming from Valdo Biadine, which is a little area about, okay, it's the area, um, Wi-Fi, see if I can go on to the Wi-Fi. Hello. Is that there? So here at San Giorgio Cafe, they have a notion of Prosecco. In fact, one of the producers is, um, I'll show you the Bizol. Ragazzi, mi piace una bottiglia di Bizol? Ah, quella lì. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Okay. Grazie, Cara. So this is uh, a producer, Bizol. Here you can see um, 1542. So this uh, producer is one of the oldest that exists. In fact, he's one of only two that own the area called Carti. Cartier is a little tiny hill uh, in uh, the Valdo Biadino region. See that? Valdo Biadino. Okay. It's a little tiny hill where the producers of the historic great varietal uh, Clara. Unfortunately, the Clara, the actual um, way of making Prosecco, we call it, but it was actually by an Italian who didn't actually patent the method. So we call it Sharma, but the inventor was actually an optic, okay? So this is um, the signature um, all spritz, Prosecco from, from Valdo Viardins. It's dry, okay? Not Trento. Um, we typically use um, the more of a dry flavor. So the ones are going to ask our esprit. This is Maria. And Sasha. These are the beautiful girls of Sasha. So when you're here next year, you're going to have to meet them. Allora, cosa aggiungi, amore? What do you add? So this has a gin that had a, a little uh, flavor of pepperoncino that they made here. Warm melon juice. Mainly. This is a sparkling rosé from the Veneto region, a producer, a female producer called Maili, A-E-I. I wonder if you can get it back home. So now. So this is quite a strong spritz. You know, um, typically, as I explained, the spritz is blended with a prosecco uh, because it's kind of before a meal, the aperitif. This is a little strong. This is a nice um, cocktail to perhaps blend with um, a first course. Um, so a nice uh, spaghetti with a raw shrimp would be ideal or a risotto. Um, so pairing, doing a little degustation with the cocktails, this is perfect. They don't shy on the alcohol. In Italy, with a little ah, oh, bellissimo, bellissimo. Grazie, Anna Maria. Grazie, amore. So, guys, what do you think about that? I think you're going to have to make this one, but actually, watermelon juice in the winter. Wow! Oh my gosh, it's delicious. È buonissimo. So they, they make their own, they, they add a little bit of grazie, salute. Wonderful, rosemary, I love rosemary. And gin, it is very refreshing. Gin, remember the uh, dominance of juniper berries actually come from Tuscany, from the Chiana Valley, okay? 
And um, there are um, also a lot of other aromas that they, they add to the gin that are coming from that area. One of the biggest producers of, uh, of juniper berry in the world is a family called Sabatini from Cortona. I can't help but talk about Tuscany when I'm in Venice. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, aperitivo time in Venice. Does anyone have any questions? Can you hear the music? Ah, it's better. Allora, looks refreshing. I'll send you, I'll send you guys, I have your email now, so I'll send you some information about the Prosecco that I spoke about. And I hope that when you can join me, we can have an esprit together at San Giorgio. Until then, stay safe, especially you can't hear music but love the trip. Oh, you can't hear the music. Okay, I'll send you the, um, the soundtrack. If you have Google Play um, or Apple Music, you can download it for free. What does that say? Ah, I can't, peppermint tea. <laughs> Enjoy your peppermint tea and stay inside. Oh, hi, Louise. Stay inside and stay safe. And I'll continue doing these um, webinars just to give you the incentive to stay inside. Um, I will definitely continue doing the morning so that all of you can join. It's something really special for me because 20 years I've been taking people on walks and I really miss you all. So it's actually a wonderful, it's so great for me to be able to do this and know that you guys are visiting Italy and having a great time. So take care. Tanti baci. Oh, Julian, un bacio grande. Thank you for joining. Ciao, belli. Grazie mille. Have a great um, evening. Love you, darling. Miss you too, Borelli. Have a great day. Ciao belli, ciao tutti.